And we are live. I think I got the microphone in the right place. Let me oh, bring it closer. There we go. Who's ready to argue about firewall rules? Let's see. Hello, everyone. Let's see. Off to a better year. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, all. Hey, all. Sweden. Two, two different people from Sweden. Awesome. <laughs> The Ikea brothers. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. I have no idea. U-P-P-S-L-A. S-A-L-A. Yeah. Oh, I can't say that. Oh, I mean, I probably could try, but I don't want to. I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> Sweden, Switzerland, Australia, Norway. All right. I'm on low. I'm always on low latency mode. It just. I don't know. It's not always low latency. So, yeah, it's uh, my goal is to always be low latency. Nah, log 4 J's dying down. The, the, this is. This is something that, you know, we were trying to reiterate the tech burnout that's created by everyone. Oh, my gosh, there's another thing. And when those things aren't that big, uh, they need to be addressed as not that big. So the later findings of Log4j aren't near as bad. They're harder to exploit. Um, yeah, so. I'm not saying not to patch. I'm just saying world's not on fire. Well, the world's on fire in completely different ways. Unrelated. Hmm. Ubiquity hasn't done any new patching because they don't need to. That's just... Uh, and that's... Here's one of those things. This is one of those... Even with the... There's a 2.17. I think it's a dot one now. But, but it, it takes... You have to read all the specific conditions. It's not only non-default. It requires these other things to be factors. And this is one of the reasons you don't necessarily see an update from Ubiquity, because if they're not affected by it, they're just going to wait till the next several iterations of it come along. And if any of those require a configuration that affects them, they do it. This is just how things are. It's not like you need... Um, something more and this is just where people i don't know why they have a hard time with it but they do um they i'm like you just don't need that it's it's not is necessary to have um a patch if you're not affected by it it's like yeah under these conditions but those conditions will never be met because like if for example an apache is a great example of this um people were upset because of the apache lua thing and i tweeted about it the uh, CVS score was really high, and I think it was a nine something. But there's just so few. Now, this is where we have to add context to it. Lua is a very popular language. Apache is a very popular web server. There is not much of a crossover, though, if you made this a Venn diagram of things that use Apache, things that are written in Lua that need the mod Lua enabled on Apache to create this vulnerability. So did I panic? No, I read the details. I decided that, hey, as soon as the patch is available, great, because the other, if there's no patch available for a system, I have to turn it off to, because off is better than hacked. So you make those type of decisions. We talked about this last week when we were talking about threat modeling and you go, can I live without this thing? Yes, you can. This is all right. Everything you can live without technically as long as it's not life support of some sort. But you go, do I leave this HTTP server up? Well, you start looking at the threats and you're like, oh, it has to have mod Lua enabled in order to exploit this flaw found in mod Lua under Apache. But it starts as headlines from all the different cybersecurity news places of, you know, high CVS, CV score in Apache. And everyone goes, oh my gosh, Apache. Everyone uses Apache. This is terrible. And then it's like, oh, by the way, it's only under this specific condition with this. So yeah. Anyways, does anyone use Lua and Apache? It took some Googling. I found something that did, but it's, there's not a lot of, there, nothing. I'm not saying nothing, but nothing that is major popular, not like WordPress. Now, if it was WordPress, yeah, that's hair on fire. Because if it was a flaw uh, in a mod 
that was used in Apache that was required for WordPress. Now, yes, there you have concern. Um, but man, you can do some Googling and go, huh, there's really not much other than some specific use cases where certain people, like there's a mod Lua enabler for certain wikis under certain plugins that need it. Like it's, it, it's not a popular plugin at all, but you know, so it's a thing. Yeah. It's like someone said right here. I never had an Apache with enabled Lua. I haven't either. I double, you know, I looked at all of our installs. It's not, it's not on by default. And if everyone's practicing principles of least privilege, you only enable the modules you need and not all of them just because they're there. And uh, away you go. But Fusion PBX uses Lua, but they're running Nginx as the web server. But do they use Lua as the language or they are enabling Lua as a module in Nginx? There, there's a difference there because lots of things can be web available, but don't necessarily use Lua. That's It's a kind of a niche thing there. I just don't think it's a popular use case. So, yeah. Um. We had a package in our Steam appliance product. We could uh, find a couple days, but then and then no problems. Yeah, there's um, that's another issue. Like a lot of some of the sim tools are based on, well, some of the cybersecurity tools are based on Elastic. The reverse engineering tools, uh, some of those, the was the the Hydra front one that is offered up by the NSA that has that in there as well. So yeah, it's kind of fun that some of the uh, cybersecurity tools will literally be that on there um oh well, let's see i'm gonna go with this one here that's my that's the right answer didn't realize apache had a lua module before the uh cve yep fair enough that's uh <laughs> uh have you tested the net alley 10g network tester uh nope i have not don't have one, not on my, not a high thing on my list. It, you know, anytime we, we run cable, we run some cat six, a plug it in 10 G. Great. Cool. I don't really need a tester. Use good cable. And, um, uh, the problem kind of solves itself there. So it's not that big of a deal to me. What was I going to log into? Mm, Mark all is red. There we go. All right. Uh, I really want to use barrier. Uh, Jay at learn Linux TV uses it. And I, it was just like randomly. Okay. People talk about things like Facebook and social media and your phone's listening to you. Cause you see something come up. Um, it's actually a mental bias. If Jay and me were having a discussion because he uses barrier, for connecting a couple different computers. I think it's barriers when he's used. And then I happen to notice barrier showing up in there. It probably showed up many times, but I didn't notice it. But your brain connects it as a coincidence. And then you go, ah, my the YouTube algorithm somehow heard me and popped this video up just when I was scrolling through YouTube. Um, or it could be because I watch Linux videos on YouTube. So Linux videos being suggested might be a thing. And I seen it and I'm like, oh, you know this video. And I end up watching it and I was like, I never seen this person on YouTube before. I like this person on YouTube. So now I have shared this person's video on YouTube. Uh, it's really as simple as that. Um, it's on my to-do list. I have not tested it, but I watched that video and said, that looks like something I need, uh, especially because as I build out my new studio, I want it to be simpler and I want to um, be able to go because I, I, I make the motion this way because there's a keyboard over here. So this keyboard right now controls the studio computer. And I look that way to see the studio computer. I look this way to see a camera attached to my computer, which is this way, which this is the keyboard for that one. And so this keyboard, which is got a tail as far as it'll reach. That's why whenever you watch me, I'm kind of tilted a little bit because th my desk and my big monitor is this way. So that's, but it'd be cool if I had one keyboard and monitor and I could just take and swing around in my spinny chair and control the other computer, the studio computer, uh, with the one keyboard and mouse. This seems like pretty convenient. Oh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. 
is it possible to port forward PA to a specific device needed forward one specific port and device of PA network? This is going to be not easy to do. And let me explain why. Everyone wants a port. PA would have to determine. I, I think they actually have an option with their tool. They would have to determine if someone else has also requested that port because you're sharing a PIA IP address with many people. I think they do have some type of, and let's look it up. Uh, I can't, I don't feel like looking it up. You can Google it. Google if, if they have the option. I don't know of any way to do it in PFSense though, uh, because PFSense port forwards are expecting to have some level of controlling. You'd have to port forward at the firewall on the other side. I don't know how to get, how to tell PIA to forward a port to you. Um, and I think their tool, their software, I, I, I haven't looked in years because I've, I've never used their software, I should say, with a minimal exception of a couple of years ago for a review. When I tested it, I set up a demo VM and loaded their um, their PIE tool. That's as much as I've ever used their software. I always use, um, you know, just not trusting. I don't trust the VPN companies. And this is one of those things that people ask about VPN companies. I don't trust them. Second, I really don't trust their proprietary software if they have any. Why would I use their software? How do I know what it's installing? Just give me your OVPN config file and I'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Simple as that. So if it would not be something native to OpenVPN to be able to make that work. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's see. Big fan from Libya. Awesome. Question regarding your PFSense firewall video I saw a moment ago. I, If I have a server with only one network interface, is it possible to uh, block allow traffic between different VLANs with that setup? Yes. So uh, the, the S in VLAN stands for security. Okay, if you didn't get the joke, the VLAN is just another subnet. And whether it's a physical interface on the box or a series of VLANs, which are still going to be treated inside of PFSense as subnets. So a subnet is either attached to a VLAN to create the logical differences, or it's connected to an interface for the logical differences. So the answer is yes. Matter of fact, it is, uh, I did not cover because I did not want to get people confused, but the video I did on the PFSense firewall, some of those are VLANs and some of those are interfaces because PFSense treats every subnet as its own you know, logical thing. It, it doesn't matter. You just see them all as different rule sets. But if I created one as a VLAN, no difference. Uh, so absolutely, yes. If you have a WAN in and then you have a, a LAN and you want to subdivide your LAN between that, then no problem. You can you can do that and it'll work. So hopefully it answered your question, David. Uh, do, 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 do. I joined a telecoms company and you're heavily invested in getting into IT. I need another IT tech. What would you look for someone? Is an apprentice a bad idea? Um, right now, the job market is terrible. Uh, well, depends on your perspective. Terrible if you're trying to hire because there's a there's more demand than there is talent. So be prepared to pay for good talent. It's really that simple. Um in, in some aspects. So what do you look for? People who obviously are knowledgeable about it, have a background in it, but the more experienced and more well-rounded, you're going to pay substantially more for that particular person. So uh, that's just make sure they're competent, make sure they understand tech. Uh, that's, yeah. I don't, I don't require certifications, but sometimes the nice thing about certifications is, is if they pass some of the tests, they put some effort in for one and it, it can be a qualifier if you have too many applicants. I, I don't want to be a gatekeeper by saying only require people with certs, but I know a few hiring managers I've talked to, they put it up because when it, well, this is more so when the job market was the opposite when they got flooded. I remember one hiring manager told me, she's like, I had 300 people apply in four days. I'm not sure yet how to filter out to this position. <laughs> like it becomes a burden. So it's not an easy task. Hey, Jordan, thank you very much. Just stopping by to say thank you. Much appreciated. I have a network that contains IP cams and network in the same land and different IP ranges, but the local system speed is much slow. Is the IP cams data the reason behind a problem? Hmm. I have a network and it contains IP cams. Um, it shouldn't. You got to think about this. I, this is a, a weirdly common question. Uh, so let's throw it out there. How much bandwidth do you think is actually needed 
to run these cameras. And if you think about how clear a Netflix or Amazon Prime or any streaming, YouTube, what you can watch YouTube at 4K, you don't have a 10 gig connection. Well, maybe you do, but it's not likely and it's not required, by the way, to watch a 4K beautifully rendered YouTube video or any type of streaming service. That also means it does not take that much bandwidth for even a 4K camera. Cumulatively, though, they add up, but they really don't pull that much bandwidth. And a lot of the cameras themselves only connect at 100. So it's an unlikely, but not without knowing the details of your network, I don't know. It's unlikely that they are saturating the bandwidth. But it's hard to say because there's a lot of factors in there. Maybe you only have a 100 meg network and you, you are saturating it, so... Yes, that's true too. Uh, I don't know if where that question came up, but uh, Sam Sheridan is absolutely correct. And that was one of the rules I had was a rule to block the uh, any type of UI access on there. Uh, if you mention your PFSense to you, but PFSense denied by default, and you just have to customize your egress policy specific to non-LAN. Okay. Don't trust companies that charge for PAA. Huh? See, uh, do, 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 do. let's see. What do we got here? Can I use PFSense? Can I use PFSense in a closed lab without affecting main ISP router? Why not? That's actually something I do already. Uh, I just realized I'm connected here. So let's uh, share my screen. So we're going to go here. Share screen. Chrome tab. I think I'm sharing the right one. Let's look. Yep, that looks like it. Uh, if you notice... I have a, let me zoom in a little bit, make it probably a little bit more viewable. If you can see right here, there's a 192.168.3 for the DHCP. You can double NAT things if you want. You just got to make sure when you double NAT that you, for those particular interfaces, so interface WAN, you don't want to block private network addresses and loop back. I make sure these aren't blocked because um, you want RFC 1918 networks work if you're double natting, but you can double nat um, PF sets. I this is how I do all my lab videos is essentially double natted like that. So yes, can you talk about building PF sets with one Nick? I think it's a, I think it's not a great idea. I, I don't see anytime you start building one Nick and divide it up with multiple VLANs. Can it work? Sure. Uh, is it a good idea? I, it's a fun experiment. I don't really feel like, like I know how to do it, just tedious. And I don't have a real, you look up for router on a stick if you want to know how to do it. It's a fun exercise. I can't think of a good reason to do it. So uh, feel free to dig up router on a stick if you want to know how, because yes, you can make it work. Do I think it's a good idea? Not really. It seems too tedious. But yes, if you have a switch that supports VLANs, you can actually use one port and split them all up of VLANs and create all these different cool separate networks on there. And I don't know why you'd do it. The, with network car, interface cards are usually not the cost inhibiting part of the APF set setup. Uh, upcoming video about making... Yeah, I want... I'm actually... I dragged my feet through the 2.5 version because I just had so many things going on. I want to do a getting started, but 2.5 has been out for a little while. And if you followed Christian McDonald's video on 2.6 that he released and I tweeted it, I've shared it. You can find him. I also shared out his recent video on how to do site to site uh, VPN. Christian McDonald is a developer working at NetGate. And he talked about some, you can look at the preview. Of course, you can switch things over uh, to the 2.6 version. If you change the train, it's in beta. So I may wait till 2.6 or may till it gets to release candidate. So um, yeah, if you go over to do, 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 probably under updates, right? Yeah. 
you can change to a 2.6 version. But once the 2.6 is out is when I will go through and uh, actually update to that. So, yes, I am working on a new one. Router on a stick. There we go. <laughs> I, I need to answer this one right here. Larry Zuckerbos using Alexa to put ads on my U face. Yes. Ray's right about this. This is a weird thing. I get a lot of comments on. I don't know a better solution right now than YouTube to put my videos out there that I would be able to do it at the scale I do. And people go, oh, I don't like YouTube because of ads. Okay. Buy YouTube premium. That's what I did because I don't like the ads. I don't like subscriptions either, but I, I dislike ads more than I dislike subscriptions. And it, does cost money for all the bandwidth. So you either tolerate the ads on your U face from the Zuckerbergs and the YouTubers, or you, uh, yeah, just that's all there is, uh, to it. So that's a, that's a really common, that is a really frequent question on, uh, lately as there's too many ads on YouTube. Can you put your content somewhere else? Would you want to buy a subscription to my content somewhere else? If there's enough people that want to do it, Sure, I could do that. I could set up a subscription service, but then I think the same people that don't want to see an ad probably would cross over to the world of, I don't want to pay a subscription. Throwing it out there, maybe. Would you be able to port forward if I set up OpenVPN on a server on Linode? There's probably better ways to do it, but um, I would probably, if you're going to build something over on Linode, I would build a WireGuard one and build a bunch of routes back and forth. I don't know if I'll do a video on that or not. Um, if you just want a quick and easy way to, to get something port forwarded off a public server, look at ngrok and grok. If you're looking for something easy, uh, it's a it's a more advanced network engineering video that I we've done it for people. I it's it's just me taking the time to put it into a script to turn it into a video. Um, I don't know if there's enough demand on that video. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's enough demand on that video for me to create it before I get some of the other ones that I think are higher priority. Uh, why do you tag ports? I, I understand the firewall rules, but how does tagging come in with VLANs? You tag the port to be the port you want. So the port, uh, I have a couple of, if you look at my VLAN explainer videos and I'm going to do a new one soon, um, just because there's some, uh, newer versions of software since I've created the other one. I didn't realize the other one was almost four years ago now. It was in 2017, but the tagging of the port in you, you a port, if it's untagged, but also has all the VLANs in it, as in a trunk port, just so we get the nomenclature right here. Uh, you, the trunk port means that that has all the data coming out of it. And when you tag it, you let's say I want to tag it for a specific VLAN, we then swap that port to be tagged only to the network I want coming out of it. So trunk means send all the data to the next piece, because maybe it needs it, if it's like a Wi-Fi or another switch. Tagging the port is where you can tag it and only send or only pull out one specific network out of that. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, there's not a really a WAF, but you can use, I prefer Sericata just because I've been using it for a while, but there's nothing wrong with Snort. Um, Sericata works great on PFSense. It's not exactly a web application firewall. Um, it, it's loose. I mean, Sericata is going to look at incoming things, but it's not near the same that you'll get with like a commercial web application firewall. But it's a great place to start because it's free and built into PFSense. I'm using PFSense on my ESXi with VMX3 adapters, so they put a lot of traffic through PFSense. I get a massive CPU on the host. Yeah, when you virtualize it, you're this is, I don't recommend, and someone will always argue with me about it. We always recommend building everything with hardware, not virtualized. I only virtualize things for lab reasons, not production. It just solves all the little hiccups that you run into. There was the Hyper-V kerfuffle when there was a big update because something in BSD broke the drivers, or was it the Hyper-V that updated the driver and it didn't work with BSD? There was a conflict. This conflict caused all these people to have problems and had to revert versions back and forth until they sorted out where the problem was and an updated driver was available. These are not problems you generally run into with hardware. And this one of the reasons we always install hardware and hardware to me is not incredibly expensive. So you're going to run into weird issues. Uh, I just hate to say it that way, but when you virtualize it, you're going to run into problems sometimes. 
Oh, and if you have a Broadcom uh, at all, I'm sorry. That's all. If you if you're using Broadcom in your stack for virtualization or just in general in life, just don't. So avoid the Broadcom ones. There's a if you look me up on XCPNG, there's a post where that has been ranted about and some funny memes made about why you shouldn't use Broadcom. Uh, let's see. Question. Assuming the setup you have is ISP or whatever router, PFSense network is the ISP router, not a weak point for credential harvesting. Um, why would the ISP, like generally, if things are ideal, the ISP router should be in bridge mode, as in it doesn't do anything but bridge the IP information over to PFSense, end of story. That's it. So you're kind of taking it out of the mix because do I think Comcast makes a great modem or do I think it was done by the lowest bidder? The second one. And therefore my Comcast modem is not to me a big risk in my network because one, it's on the other side of my PF sense. Second, it's in bridge mode and it's not handling routing functions at all, which means the admin interface is only accessible allegedly by Comcast. I don't know if there's some hacky things people can do to get into my router. I doubt it. But if they could, once again, if they took over my Comcast router, which would not be good, it would be kind of annoying. What would they get? They're on the other side firewalled of my PF sense. So it's not really an issue. Um, it would more be an annoyance because if someone got a hold of the router, they would probably just troll me and be disruptive and reset it all the time. Oh, wait, Comcast does that on its own. It only took us calling them twice to get one replaced. And finally, to actually our third, third, cable modem we got quit rebooting randomly once a week they don't know why they couldn't find a problem with it but replacing it fixed it oh well, let's see what do you think of force dns rules less necessary I, I overrated i don't worry about it that much i matter of fact some of your this is so the consulting we do let's start there and how we get this insight into things a bunch of my IoT stuff doesn't work. Please help. Okay, here's our rate. That's a lot to pay just to fix IoT stuff. Yeah, what'd you do? Well, I locked everything down super, super tight. I restricted the internet. I egress filtered. I redirected all the DNS. Yeah, now your IoT devices that expect certain responses from specific DNS servers don't work. It depends on how much troubleshooting you want to do. If you want to force everything through there, absolutely. And I've talked about this. I don't remember what video I talked about it in. There's a way to redirect your DNS and... Actually, it's documented in NetGate's documentation. You can redirect DNS. You can grab the grab the DNS, re-loop it. If it says it's going out 50, 53 and wherever it thinks it's going, you can hijack it and tell it there. I mean, you can do that if you want, just to lock things down a little bit more if you want to. Do I think it's absolutely necessary? For home users, not as much. For businesses, yeah, lock things down more because you're really worrying about it. IoT is annoying, but not usually the attack vector people think it is. Um, it's it's more of a privacy than it is anything else. Oh, let's see. Um, I'm looking to replace my Nginx proxy manager running Docker using HA proxy on my OpenSense. HA proxy is proper use case. Yeah, I have a few videos on HA proxy. Um, the proper use case for this is you also need all. Yeah, I, I have a HA proxy and wildcard cert video that will hopefully help with that. Um, the other question I've seen here. Uh, you can do NAT reflection on there. I think that's maybe what you're looking for. I'm not 100% on the question. If you if you go through the documentation, they have that documented in there on that. I think you're, is or are you asking about dynamic natting? I'm not a, not, I'm not a hundred. Yes, DNAT is supported. I don't think they call it DNAT in PF sense. They call it something different though. I use transmission at jail and true NAS with open VPN with IP firewall rules. I got my air VPN set up on PF sense using your video. Turned off VPN at jail transmission now that, uh, oh, okay. I don't know if that's a statement or, a, or that. So let's see. What are my thoughts on zero tier and primary user for remote access, including needs and data centers? Zero tier is great. 
I've done videos on it. I like it. I like overlay network solutions. I think there's a lot of opportunity and growth in that particular market of the networking because it offers you a really interesting way to connect, especially with more and more people doing work from home. And there's some big advantages they have over your traditional VPNs. So overlay networks, zero tier being among them are popular. And it's funny because, you know, zero tier came out, tail scale is using WireGuard as a protocol, but works similar in a way as zero tier. And then there's the Nebula system, which actually is the back end for Slack. Um, and that's pretty cool. I've reviewed all of these. So oh, the new studio is coming together. Yes. I'm going to have all the computers in a separate room. Um, I got to, as a matter of fact, when I'm done today, I got to, there's a few things that got to, we're starting to paint and things like that. So all the drywall's getting there and everything is slowly coming along with a new studio. It is, yes. What's new in 2.6 that people want to upgrade? Um, it's lots of under the hood things, the way they are refer, uh, looking at slicing things up with ZFS differently. I don't remember the whole list. Maybe we can pull it up. Let me see. That's 2.6 roadmap. They have a nice list. Let's see. I'm just going to drop it in there. There's a bunch of stuff. So rather than me read it to you, I'll just throw it in the link down here for the roadmap for 2.6. Uh, new PF sense regarding question on 2.6. If the release notes are available on netgate site, does that mean the release is imminent? No, I mean, it sometimes they just do progress updates. It's like this is where we're at with this beta version and release candidate thing we're working on. So, um, yeah, how do I get my Phillips Hue bridge to different subnets? I have no idea, no idea. I, I put all the IoT on the same subnet as I described in my video because getting these things to work on other subnets just is a headache. And by the way, this, whether you like it or not, this phone in my hand is an IoT device. And it's not like because it's a special phone. It's like a, it's a Pixel 6. They're all IoT devices. Put them all on the same network. That's my answer for those things. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Any joy with a single IP and PFSense HA and using scripts to set interface down on the backup PFSense to make the interface active? And I don't have any scripts for that. Um, when I've done my HA videos on PFSense, uh, you, I generally do them. Let's do this while we're sitting here. We're going to we're going to upgrade this by the way cuz you know, so we're watching it do something. Confirm. Bye-bye system. Oh, I better I hope I got a backup of this. Oh. I should have checked first, right? That that's how this works, right? See if there's a backup after you said yes. Please tell me there's a backup of this. I I say I'm joking. The uh System update failed. Oh. Okay. Try that again. Confirm. Please wait while the system update initializes. We'll see if it fails again. <laughs> No, I'm not using anything um, other than the defaults. Oh, let's see. Do you have any recommendation for PFSense and ESA get high CP load? I've uh, maybe you didn't hear me answer that question already. Does it make any sense to have Suricata on the WAN if you like lots of noise on it? Uh, what are your thoughts on Snort? Uh, 
yeah, I like Siracata because I'm used to it, but there's nothing wrong with nothing wrong with snort. Works fine. Let's see what else. Yeah, this is virtualization is def definitely a problem because when you update your virtualization, sir, or you're having a problem with it, you don't have internet to troubleshoot it. So, okay. Wow, I'm going through a lot of here. Uh, let me catch up. So ideal setup is ISP router bridge PF sense. Yep. Uh, I'm using StreamYard. That's how I'm doing this. Uh, let's see. Yes, you can. Um, it is it is possible to uh, double NAT. People do it all the time because sometimes it just doesn't. You can't do it. Uh, when when you started doing YouTube, do you ever think you'd be where you are today? I don't know. There's not really a plan. I didn't put as much thought as people might think. I just kind of keep doing and it keeps happening. Uh, what is that from Rick and Morty? I just keep doing it and it just happens. So I keep, I always like the, the plan words that I just keep Googling things and things keep happening. That's how I feel mostly about it. Most all the time. <laughs> uh, Tom doesn't really use Docker, so he's not going to do Docker tutorials. You'll probably find those over on Jay's channel. Uh, hoping Christian does a site-to-site -site video with dynamic routing. Yeah. I liked his video. It's really good if you haven't watched it because he he's he does it in the way I like the best, which I don't just tell you what buttons to click. I try to tell you why you should click those buttons. And Chris did an excellent job of that, of telling me this is why you do it this way unless you have other use cases. And he described those different use cases pretty well. Which I'm up to, this thing's broken. I wanted to go to the new version. Changes have been saved. System update. Let's see if it works now. If it fails again, I'm just going to reboot it and try again. I think I can do it from the command line, maybe. Uh, let's see. Does PFSense stop support software for NetGate hardware? Um, no, it'll... Until it's... You can run PFSense. They don't really stop sending you updates for it. You can keep updating it until... Maybe it just doesn't work because it's so old or some requirement, but yeah. Um, generally, you can keep working out for a long time. Um, do you have any thoughts on Sophos versus PFSense? Do you have any clients using Sophos? The, anyone I've talked to, which has been a very limited number of people, I see people that go, I love it, I love it. And I hear people going, I loved it until I tried something different. So I don't know. Uh, there's always people and have reasons for not liking something. I don't have any specific reason not to like Sophos, but I don't use Sophos, so I don't have a reason to like Sophos either. So I have no opinions on it. Is opening up, essentially, if you open it, yes, anytime you open ports, you're opening it to the world. That's just one of those things. It is a clear Romulan ale. It's actually just water. Sometimes I have tea. Today, I'm, I got water. Hmm. All right. You guys are sending, I'm trying to answer all of them. There's so many of them here. Uh, if you're following your tutorial, saying your privacy the other day, I lost access to my OMB SMB shares. I, maybe I'm not sure what you changed. That one's a tough one. Um, What shouldn't be virtualized besides PF Sense? True NAS. That's another one. Yes, there's ways you can do it. It's another something I'd run in production now. Will my WireGuard Bork after upgrading to 2.6? I have no idea because it's beta. 
Uh, I would say beta software, all things are on the table. So take, take that for what it's worth. When, when things are beta, things are going to break when it's released. No, it shouldn't. It should work fine, but it's not released. So, um, I don't know what's going to break. I'm curious. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Cause I'm curious what's going to break. So we're going to just turn off the VPN. Actually, we'll do this. Uh, it doesn't even say why I was looking at the console, console messages. Yeah, whatever. Actually want restart, reboot, submit. That over there, this over here, so you guys can actually watch it reboot. It's this is virtualized and running inside of XCPNG. So now we can watch something on the screen. Well, let's make it bigger. So, all right. Uh, Putting off an all-day road trip to reconnect VTPN route location. Ah, we got our friends from Chew Charts in here. Even releases are known to break things. Yeah, things happen. Things happen all the time. Uh, what would be the best hardware choice for PFSense? I, yeah, it's going to depend on all your things, on uh, what you want. So. Never heard of Zen Armor, so I don't know anything about them. I have no opinions on it. Sofa 6G is not bad. A lot of software you can get with PFSense, uh, but you have to pay licenses. Okay. You need to set up your Discord better, and it's not looking so good. Probably. It's probably full of garbage. Um, did it get spammed again? If it gets spammed again, maybe I'll just delete it. I don't go there. I just don't do real-time chat very well. So I don't know. Maybe if, if or something bad happens to my um, uh, Discord, I'll probably just purge it. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of my feelings on, on it overall. I don't really... The problem with real-time chat is it's... um it's ephemeral and it just kind of leaves. And then it requires me to be there at a certain time to answer questions. And I don't like going back to try to sort out the 200 messages and like someone tag me in it. That's why I run my forums. The forums are really easy. Their forums are also indexed. So when I'm spending time answering questions in forums, when people search for, I want to know how to do a thing, they'll find the forum result that actually has a discussion and answer a write-up that I may have done on how to solve a problem. Because when I solve a problem for someone in a forum, I don't have to answer the same question as many times. It's kind of a one-to-many problem. So uh, ZFS is better, but writes just more often than UFS. Any reason to change if I have UFS good, no break. Um, there, they mentioned a lot of extra engineering that would go into PF sense using ZFS. So it'll be something I want to try. I'm going to, I'll probably reload my lab, uh, system with this. So let me go back into this. Log back in. we'll try this uh, update thing again. Confirm. See if it breaks this time. It might. I, I, don't, I got nothing on this. <laughs> going, going, going. Yeah, but threads, like the only thing, I don't know. It still doesn't look near as good. It's so messy in Discord. It's like, it's IRC, but not wonderful. Um, IRC, at least, is nice and clean.
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and also the other, the disadvantage, as I stated with the discord is going to be right away. The fact that, yeah, it, it's, it's not indexed anywhere in Google. So you can't, if someone says, Hey Tom, how do I do this thing? And I reply in the forum and a week later, someone pops, pops into my, or uh, ask that same question in discord. And then ask again in a week later and ask again a week later. Now that information just keeps getting asked and I can copy and paste my previous responses, but yeah. Uh, let's see. You looking for a VPN? I have an affiliate code. If you're just looking for a VPN provider for PIA down below. Discord is much better in threads. Yeah. Ah, you do not get to have someone's IP when you get DDoS, unless they're bad. Um, that's yeah. There's no uh, there's no easy way, and they have to you know have bad opsec to reveal their IP. You don't always know who's DDoSing you. It's unfortunate. It's the way of the internet, and DDoSing is is old. DDoSing people is as old as the internet. <laughs> That's for sure. It is. It is not anything new. Check the logs. What? We're just gonna guess. We don't want to actually have the logs in here. Is there an update log on here? Is it under packages? Um, uh, that's packages there. It seems like it'd be under system, OS and boot, GUI services. I don't know if we can do it from the command line. So in here. Is there an update from here? Update from council. This will give us an error. Uh, hey, yes. Whoop. Read, I think it says segmentation fault. I didn't. I think I skipped right over that message. Oh, that's not good. PID 80928 terminated segmentation fault. So there's the error. Something's wrong with the updater. So, no worries. I'll reload it later if, if I care. I don't know if I even care right now. Ooh, there's a new version of WireGuard out. That's cool. Oh, no, wait, there's not. It's because we're on the wrong update version. So, let's fix that first. So, update. Let me switch back to the other train. Get the system back where it belongs. <laughs> See, don't uh, do we take this off topic of easing and monitoring regards to gray log? Um, Security Onion has a bunch of their own videos on it. I haven't done any on Security Onion, but Security Onion is pretty cool. Uh, gray log. I, I dump everything into gray log. That's my monitoring solution. All the firewall logs, terracotta logs, uh, actually logs from Unify, logs from systems in the office, and every all all the infrastructure we run dumps into gray log. So that's I've got videos on gray log. I got I have a recent troubleshooting video I did too. Yeah, seg fault. Whoops. Uh yeah, I'm doing something stupid. PFSense command line update work for me. <laughs> yep. Hey, watching all the way from South Africa. Cool. Way on the other side. Hello from Scotland. Yeah, um, something I didn't cover in a video because I didn't want to uh, make the, uh, what do you call it? I didn't want to confuse that video on my PFSense and firewall rules, but I am going to do is talking about when you design networks, how you stick a leg of each device in that network. And 
what it means is, for example, my Synology has multiple network interfaces. So my Synology has a cable going to each one of the networks. And by doing it like that, it's just way easier uh, to deal with because now you're not trying to route everything. You're putting it in there. And then there's ways. And I'm going to do a video specific on Synology because TrueNAS makes it really easy. TrueNAS, you just choose what interface to bind it to. Synology doesn't have interface bindings, but it has firewall rules. So the default firewall rules on Synology, unless you touch it, are all open. So you have to go in and create deny rules on the networks to deny things like access to DSM. I will do a video maybe tomorrow on that. I'll see how inspired I feel because I want to get a couple cybersecurity videos done. I just, you know, I bounce around between topics sometimes, but, you know, that's the thing. Let's see. What is your opinion on firewall and open hardware and open core? Sure. Why not? That's my opinion. Um, do you alert on stuff from gray log? Yes. You go in gray log, you can pick out different conditions. Like if someone were, to, well, even for me, it's any login successes because I don't log into my servers unless I'm doing something. And because I'm the one doing something or one of my staff and it's on a predetermined reason to log in because most of my servers are all set to unattended upgrades, things like that. Um, I have alerts on failed or successful logins, any login. I want to, I want to know failed logins are extremely concerning successful logins, depending on what time they are, are also of concern. So yes, you can just grab alerts out of there. And because we, there's so limited in scope, who's even allowed to log in or it log into what and from where um, any login is basically, it's always logged, but it's also then alerted if there's a uh, reason to do so. Uh, I've never tried to make zero tier work with PF sense. So not on my, not on my to-do list. PF sense does not have, I don't think any native support for VX lands. Uh, why did I pick gray log rather than elastic? The problem is every elastic one I've looked at, um, it, it just doesn't seem as stable. Gray log is actually very stable, has a lot of extra features around logging, alerting, and I found it just easier to manage and set up. Like they, they put a lot of engineering around Elastic that I think makes it better. But if you just want to use Elastic natively, try, go ahead. There's, you know, it's still based, there's, you know, Elastic native, um, as I say, a bad thing, I know people that told me they like it better. Use what makes you happy. That's the wonderful world of uh, having more than one product out there. And also, if I use one product, it doesn't mean I hate the other one. That is a way polarizing problem in tech that drives me a little bit crazy is the concept of if you do this, it can only be this way type attitude. Like if Tom likes this product, he has to hate product B. So <laughs> I don't just I don't use it. So. If you're in tissues with PPOE and CenturyLink with PFSense, I simply have zero clients with PPOE. So I don't think much about PPOE at all because I just, I never run into it. It's not, it's not that often that we have anyone outside of the U.S. that's using it. We see some people using it outside the U.S. It seems to be more popular in Europe, but it doesn't, it doesn't come up too often. Does it support IPsec? I'll assume you mean PFSense. The answer is yes. What tool to use update servers, both Windows and Linux? Uh, apt-get update for Linux um, or unattended upgrades. And Windows, uh, that's a whole different topic. We use an RMM tool to manage all of our updates. Well, syslog is just syslog. We send syslog to graylog. Uh, 
Um, failed login monitoring is sometimes very nice. We use Ninja RMM. We're migrating over to it. They support it. So failed logins are something you can uh, that's fully supported in Ninja RMM as well. So thank you very much for the donation, JSP. Hey, uh, let's see, you did a video a while ago on VLANs with Unify. I want if I want each device on its own VLAN, uh, does it have to be on its own Wi-Fi network? Well, here's the thing. Each SSID, so if you if you want each Wi-Fi device on its own VLAN, you can do that. So you just would set up, so I want each Wi-Fi device on its own VLAN. Does it have to be on its own? I mean, each SSID can be a VLAN. Well, it usually is a subnet, but it can be a VLAN. And I, I guess I'm not completely understanding your goal of what you're trying to do. Like one access point, per network you can do that or generally the the better way to do it in my opinion is you take and trunk all trunk all the vlans and everything to each ssid or, or to each uh, access point and then you break off these settings in the ssid so hopefully that makes sense um i'm not sure if that answers it posted my farms for a more a better discussion on that hopefully that makes sense It's about 15 minutes. Maybe Bikini hasn't come up with a firmware update. Is that normal? Probably not. It usually doesn't take that long. Do you prefer RMM over WSUS? I prefer if WSUS worked, but I live in the real world where sometimes it doesn't. So we just use the RMM to monitor it and tell it to update and roll patches because WSUS has been proven unreliable. Someone's going to tell me I'm wrong and Windows is the most wonderful thing ever. And I'm fine with people who live in a bland and i apparently don't share that view <laughs> i work with we have so many computers we know if you work with one computer and it works all the time that's not a good baseline statistic um once you've worked with lots of them it's very different uh do you prefer one login for all that's a terrible idea uh or each its own. Everything has separate logins. That's and people have separate logins because that's how you track the different people. That's that's very important. Hey, Grayson, awesome that you thank you for the donation. Um, great that you're studying for your CompTIA. Good stuff. Thank you very much for the donation. Um, it's not hard troubleshooting things if they're blocked twice. You can figure out who blocked what by doing a dig at the PF sense or a dig at the external DNS to figure out who blocked what. Yeah, when WSUS works, it's great. And when it doesn't, it just decides it's not going to. Um, we can't rely on Windows to patch itself. It is it is proven really bad at patching itself. Not only that, Microsoft has proven bad at patching it. How long did it take them? Like a year of Windows printer nightmare? Like there's so many things Microsoft just been terrible about patching. So definitely unify over uh, that. I am going to do a video on Ninja pretty soon here. Um, so, yeah. That's, uh, I'll, I mean, I don't know what I can really do a video on how to set it up. Everyone's subs can be a little bit different, but I'll cover what we use Ninja for. Maybe that'll help give you an idea. Private VLAN or dynamic? I'm going to go private VLAN. I'm not even sure what the question is other than like a yes or no here. Sure, we'll go private VLAN. Whatever. I don't know what you're asking, so hopefully that makes sense. I should put something more interesting on the screen. This is kind of boring. Oh, it didn't switch. Right. Whoops. Switch this back over. Update settings so we can... Save. Make sure we're on the latest stable here. Let's go ahead and reboot this thing again. 
I can always revert it back. Push out updates for a month and uh, big features. Yeah, you can do some of that. <laughs> Buy me a chat. Hey, I, I throw all the money at you. Yes, I'll be definitely be doing a video on Ninja. How do you save manage all the root logins and creds to make sure your employees you you get, make sure employees have their own SSH keys that you can monitor things from? And then you set up a, me and Jay did a video on Bastion servers, but usually create something like a Bastion server. Um, I've actually looked at, and there's a pretty cool product out there. I don't use it, but it looks interesting called Teleport, which is a more advanced Bastion server, but that it has lots of logging features in it. It's popular in some of the enterprise use cases. Uh, they actually reached out to me. I think it's a neat product. Maybe one day I'll do a video on it, not doing it anytime soon. There are videos on it now um, that you can find by other people, but yeah, the, you, you get everyone their own SSH keys and that's how you do it. You, if you narrow them down so they can only access their SSH keys and don't give them your keys, they can't log in as you. Uh, does the CPU and RAM matter much of PFSense on a 300 meg connection? Actually, it doesn't. So PFSense is rather efficient um, if you are dealing with sub one gig and not too much in terms of like Sericata and things like that. Once you start doing a bunch of Sericata or a bunch of more advanced features or have lots and lots, thousands of rules, then it's going to take a little bit longer. So I do like IPA beers. If you're asking about beers, I'm, I'm in on IPA beers. Uh, X was present. Uh, Oculus. Oculus 2 or whatever that is. I've been playing with that. I answered this question. I like Unify over TP-Link. Uh, not much. Um, Palo Alto, I, people seem to like them. I know a few people, a few friends that use Palo Altos. I think they make a nice product, but I don't particularly use them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them that I've heard. Your views of hardware offloading upon different hardware, like quad port network cards and the new 10 gig network cards. Uh, generally, because we're buying PF Sense hardware most of the time, it's whatever the default is for those and it works. Do you do international consulting all the time? Uh, we have a lot of clients outside the US, quite a few that buy consulting time from us. So absolutely. Uh, documentation and inventory, um, wiki, wiki and spreadsheets. We don't have to manage that. A netbox is cool. If you're managing a data center with a bunch of IP addresses and managing large, uh, racks. Awesome. Great tool. Uh, I don't use it though. Cause I don't manage data centers. So it's less, it's less needed for me. I'm not managing pools of IPs, uh, on my day to day. That's just not, not something we do a lot of. I don't know. I need to pick. I haven't done a hot sauce of the day in a little while, so been a minute. Um, you can get PF Sense working virtualized, but I always recommend not virtualizing PF Sense. We had that discussion earlier. I avoid virtualized PF Sense. That's uh, that's generally my solution. But you can, you can definitely get it set up working on a virtualized port. You just gotta whatever port you have in Proxmox attached to the WAN, you just have to get it bridged over to your cable modem. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I heard a message. No, it's my staff. It's nothing I'm working on. So, all right. We just document them. I mean, what do you mean? You just, I, I don't, I don't understand. Maybe, um, I guess if you, I, I don't have any customers that have like 10,000 computers at a single site. So maybe that's why I don't need it. I guess if you have that many at a site, it may make sense. But I, you know, some of the big clients we have, you know, several hundred computers at a site, but that's not, we're across their organization. 
I don't really need NetBox for that. So <laughs> we use Excel. Actually, we use uh, Google Sheets. Um, that's our that's our big thing. I don't use TNSR. It's all command line driven, and I just haven't taken the time to learn it. So, I mean, knock yourself out if you want to use it. It's not on my um, list. I, good news, Stephen. I have a video on how to do PF sense redundancy with failover. I've actually got one or two, maybe three videos on that topic of how to configure and set it up. What do you think about 5G on a network router? Eh, don't care. Um, I always like it as a separate device, not attached to my router. Uh, I like it just to be, here's a, here's a box that we can stick a 5G card in or whatever your different SIM cards are uh, to support a cell backup. And then we take that device and we plug it into a network port on our PF Senses. Done. Um, I don't really want it built in, but that's me. I mean, I'm sure someone's going to say, Tom, you're completely wrong. The future is having them all built in. And I don't know. I just used to it being separate. Yeah, um, there is, if for those of you looking, uh, where'd it go? We'll pull this up. I don't use it. I just think it's a neat looking product. So someone will be happy that I dropped it in here because maybe you do lots of, you know, things and you need to say goodbye to spreadsheets and say hello to a user-friendly asset management system. Your team will love uh, Snipe IT open source management. So for those of you interested, I've never used it. I don't plan on doing a video on it, but I'll mention this exists. So uh, yeah, there you go. There's the URL for it. For those of you looking for something. Thank you very much. Much appreciated, Michael. You know, I did test Hoodoo. I think Hoodoo's great. Hoodoo makes a pretty cool product. But my problem with Hoodoo, uh, let me pull up their website. And that's, this is the one we're talking about. Uh, my problem with Hoodoo is once I get tied up in their licensing, if they decide to increase the price, then they increase the price. And I guess I'm just, I live with it. And it's kind of the same mentality a lot of these companies have. And I don't know this specifically about them, but it's like, hey, here's my uh, here's my product. We're going to give it to you at a great price. We're going to gain market share. And then we're going to raise the price because we'll sell ourselves to an investor. The investor will buy us and then just keep ratcheting up the price until people complain, but not quit. Like there's a balance. The investors do it because who's going to buy this documentation platform? Someone. And when they buy it, what's going to happen? They're just going to go, I need a return on investment. I give these guys X dollars. How do I get my X dollars back on my product investment? Well, we got X thousand people, you know, subscribe to it. What if we charge them uh, 10 more dollars a month or 15? Oh, they bitched when we did it all the way at 25. I think the happy middle is 22 a month, right? This is one of the reasons I'm not big on putting all my documentation into these. Wiki has been the way we do it for a while because it works. And we just create spreadsheets for clients for documenting things. And I know it's, I don't know, it works for me. Uh, Sam, yeah, this is I, in the UK. PPOE is popular as well. I think people find it weird. We don't authenticate our connections here via PPOE. We just hand out IP addresses like your static IP addresses are just given like here they are. Or most of the consumer side stuff is DHCP. You get the IP address you get our DHCP reservation said this one's yours for now. So. Ah. Uh. I don't know if that helps or not or hinders. What is, I don't even know what their pricing is. Product wise, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, $31 a month, three years is included. Then it's $15 a month for additional users. So that's what their pricing is right now. It's a cool looking product. Oh, in Canada. Am I the only one here? We're not using it. So. <laughs> Uh, 
PPO is popular in Canada with Bell Canada. Okay. Main distribution frame and intermediary distribution frame. I try to remember. If, eh, I know I've covered it. I just can't remember what video off the top of my head. So the um, it's one of the things I thought about doing is uh, another video explaining because we just put in a series of MDFs and IDFs. They're basically your main you know, data center room, your server room, but then maybe your building is uh, 400,000 square feet and you have a couple smaller distribution rooms. So that's usually what the IDFs and MDFs are. Michigan's all the way up pretty close to Canada. Still no PPUE. Yeah. I think the only reason I've ever heard of Kemp virtual load balancer is because best I can tell, because it said paid promotion on his video, they paid network Chuck to do a video and everyone says, Tom, what about it? Why would I use a closed source proprietary system? That's less popular than an open source alternative like HA proxy. I have no interest. I don't, I've never heard of it before network Chuck did a video and I didn't watch network Chuck's video on it. I just had all these people asking me, is it an alternative to HA proxy? I'm like, why would I use a closed source alternative when a popular open source alternative is there and it's well documented? So I, I, I don't know. I use it if you want. I don't know anything about it. I'm an HA proxy kind of person. Or other reverse proxies. I mean, Nginx is good if you want to set that up as a reverse proxy. Uh, there's there's other tools out there. There's um that that Digital Life YouTube channel. They've got a couple of videos on different types of reverse proxies. Fiber in Hungary as well comes over PPOE. Interesting. Ah, it's because they, uh, multiple clients on fiber. But then Bell Canada, for those who use PPE and the other ones are fiber fiber. Okay. There's a lot of it on here. Uh, you can probably Google Redis and figure that one out. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on there. <laughs> Where is Hungary? <laughs> Kemp is the same as an F, uh, similar to F5. Yeah, F5 I've heard of, so... Uh, what we put, let me find something more interesting to put back on the screen. What should we put? This is it booted back up. It's not broken anymore. My PA Swiss is missing. Actually, I should restore this system back to its former glory. So we'll go ahead, stop it. I had a snapshot. This is what I did four days ago because I just did that video. So we will revert this to before PIA. I don't really need PIA set up on it anymore for what I'm doing. Actually, I do. I'll leave it. This is how I revert snapshots and things like that. These are This is uh, Zen Orchestra. I play with this a lot. This is where all my lab stuff exists. So if we, whenever I'm building things in labs. Even my wire guard labs, firewall testing labs, things like that. That's all done right in here. Update. <laughs> People ask, how do you update Linux? Just like this. Actually, oh, I can't. It's behind. Oh, it's it's dead. She's dead, Jim. Studio 200 is one of the labs. I actually have to turn the PF Sense back on to make it work. So we'll turn the PF Sense back on to make it work. Ah, 
So we'll do that. All right. Enough playing with that. So yes, my desktop still runs on Pop OS. It's my favorite. It just works. I have no idea his sister's buying him pizza today. I know because his uh, my daughter came by and got money from me. So. <laughs> Working on a home lab with NAS built in, torn between Unraid and TrueNAS, a host on Proxmox, maybe custom Ubuntu. Um, I, I like TrueNAS, but... For home users, I know a lot of people have told me that there's more flexibility in Unraid, but Unraid also suffers from performance problems that you won't have with TrueNAS. So I'm TrueNAS all the way. I don't plan on doing anything on Unraid. It's not, it's not something we use ever. So I don't really want to take the time to learn something I don't use. TrueNAS, on the other hand, we do lots of builds with, builds with it. We do lots of consulting. And uh, because I'm very actively using it all the time, I can speak to it, not just from a, hey, here's what it looks like, but also from a, here's our things that what, you know, when we use it in production, here's things that are problems or ways we set it up or ways we optimize. And it's coming from experience. So that's one of the reasons there. Hey, you can do nested virtualization. I think it's a fun academic uh, learning opportunity. So... Yep, HA proxies and PF Sense, and I have three videos on the topic on my channel. If you type in HA proxy on my channel search, you'll find three separate videos on that topic. That what size you use for different types of business sizes? Um, they actually it's listed right on PF Sense's website. If you go to the NetGate hardware listing, they tell you uh, those details. Uh, Jay has done some testing with Open Media Vault. It's kind of cool because it uses, le it's like for some low resource situations. But once again, it comes back to, I don't use it ever. So I don't know much about it. I think Jay did one or two videos at Jay from Learn Linux TV. Um, there's a few other people that have done videos on it. So I don't think it's a terrible product. I just don't use it. Um. Uh, probably not. The only way to really do that is going to be create a series of rules. So best approach to blocking VPN site to site without seeing each other. Lots of rules. I never use edge routers either anymore. So, Oh yeah. As soon as it came out, I upgraded to the latest version of pop OS. Yes. Uh, PF sense, definitely all day, every day in my home lab. I think you can do rate limiting. I've never set up rate limiting in it. Uh, just lots more videos. So 39 ham lab shows together, um, at least 39 more, but more likely just, we, we don't have any end game. Uh, we're just going to keep, keep as long as people want to, and me and Jay are uh, relevant. We're going to keep making videos on it. So. Ah, the preferable way to get a LAN cable from the back of rack mounted server to the front is connect connect to a switch. So this is, I showed this in my rack build video. It looks nicer if you do the double ends, but I'm not going to lie. There's plenty of times when I've just left the punch out and pulled a wire through the punch out. I mean, you want it to look as nice as possible, but there comes diminishing returns. But the double punch out ones is going to be the cleanest way to do it. If you got the budget, just keep buying double punch out or I'm um, sorry, double ended. Um, you know, joiners, it works. But of course, once you've added a joiner, you've now added potentially more problem. So pulling the cable through the hole uh, without anything in it and plugging it into a switch can still look pretty nice. I think if you look at the photo in my thumbnail, and let me see if I can pull that up. So let me... Um... See if this works. So yeah, do you see how I'm pulling these through the hole here and they just go around like this? That's another way you can do it where 
um, it works. So. <laughs> How come you recommend not to use IDS on WAN unless you use open ports? Well, it's the reality is you're just gonna get a lot of noise. If you want the noise, for you know, here's the problem: you turn it on, you see the noise, you're like, oh my gosh, the internet is attacking me, and then you have a bunch of false positives. So it's up to you. If you see a bunch of things in there, and it kind of depends on the rule order, whether the block rule came before or after Sericata. Uh, mostly you want to talk about the data flowing through, not just what hits the WAN. Uh, I have no videos on OpenVPN as HTTPS. Like there's encaps, there's ways to encapsulate it. So it looks more like standard TLS traffic, but yeah. I don't have any videos. On, I don't plan to do any videos on it either. Can TrueNAS do HA filler replication syncing? Um, they sell hardware that does. So yes. TrueNAS does HA with specific hardware from IAC systems. What Sam said, you can run IDS on LAN if you want, if you want uh, less noise than on WAN. Simple as that. Never tried, don't know the answer if you can load OpenSense on NetGate hardware. Directory service I use for what? Uh, most people are using Active Directory or Azure AD. PFSense on a Pi? No. You can't run it on a Pi. It doesn't work. I don't care for 40 gates, um, but I prefer PFSense. Self-hosted VPN? Uh, I have a video on how to build your own WireGuard server. That's that's the best. I'm preparing to set up a VLAN using PFSense and Unify APs. I'm on the latest controller version. They've changed how VLAN is set up. Do you have a new vid? I do not. Uh, use the old interface, and it's not that much different. Their new interface is terrible uh, for setting up VLANs. They, they chose to do it in a less good way. <laughs> so um, I would recommend... Uh, just you can, I'm going to make a new video eventually. It's just not something I have time to do right now, but my older videos work. If you use the old interface and unify. What's the hottest hot sauce you can recall worth having rather than stunt sauce. You know, the express Sora, I think, um, the last tab's not bad. I liked it. Not everybody does the express Sora. One of them that's probably linked on my site. That one's pretty hot, but still flavor. So there's a few of them out there. I never used Palo Alto, never heard anything bad about them. So any upcoming videos on Shunia scale? Uh, I got to do some more testing with it. It's almost released. So probably pretty soon. My last testing was just so disappointing in the performance side. And because we're using it as a storage target for virtualization, performance matters in a lot of my use cases. So that was what really held me off of it. Uh, SG2100, can you run LACP? I don't know. I never tried. Uh, don't open ports. That's what stops things going from WAN to LAN. If you don't open ports, you don't have to worry about bad things coming from WAN to LAN. Oh, yes. I wish Ubiquity would stick with the classic UI. Yes, me and Cody both use a lot of ubiquity equipment and we both can agree on that along with many other people. <clears throat> I have a video that breaks down um, how inter-VLAN routing works on switches. Uh, if you type in like inter-VLAN routing on my channel, I have an explainer video. So there are switches that support that, that have the ability. So it's it's... It's a lot more than I'll have time to explain right now. Just watch that video and I break break that down on there. Ah, we actually have the developer of WireGuard in here. So it works at NetGate. So I said nice things about you. I don't know if you're here earlier, Christian, but we were just talking about your videos. And uh, 
I, I told people they should go watch the wire guard video you did for site to site, which of course prompts people going, but we need one now on site to site plus dynamic routing, which I'm sure you are working on at some point. Maybe I'll work on one too. <laughs> Um, what are your go-to switch in AP with PF sense? Probably. Yeah. Unify just works for most situations. Aruba is not bad either. Uh, we've got some Aruba stuff out there. I know a few, one of my friend runs an IT company. They love Aruba. So. <laughs> I never play games on my Tesla. So I know they stop people from being able to play games while driving. Which you had to say, yes, you're a passenger. Not all games are available, but whatever. Uh, we'll add that to our list. Matuk's hot pepper sauce. Um... I think yes. I believe you. I believe it does pass through. Uh, maybe this is a question Christian has answered if he's still in here. Um, the rule order. I think it hits Sericata before it hits HA Proxy. Um, does NetGate have switches? I haven't found any switch that doesn't work with NetGate hardware. So all of them. All of the uh, switches I've tested work fine with them. I'm just reading some of the comments here. Does your TrueNAS backup host need to be as beefy as the main if you just use for ZFS snapshot? No. I mean, you can have a slower system that you're replicating to. Um, it's just going to be whatever speed it is. Let's take a look at my face over here. To at least have PF Sense pulled up. There we go. Where your guard is routed, I don't see OSP. It should work. Um, once you have the routing set up, I don't think it'd be hard to add the knowledge for those on there. I just need to set up a lab, the a lab setup to do a video on that. I don't use IPv6. Sorry. Maybe Christian will make a video on it, but I'm not an IPv6 person. I love all the hate I get for it. It makes me amused. So, yes, layer three switches should do the inner VLAN routing. That's why I said I have a video on it where I break it down and explain. Because calling them a layer three switch, I mean, it's yes, but it's more specifically a switch that supports it. And I believe I've talked before, If I have one on Unify because they did it in a dumb way. Um, their inner VLAN routing on Unify is not great. Do you plan to do a video about new Ubiquiti AI cameras? You know, I don't know. I They're always out of stock, so it just becomes a talking point. And it, it's, uh, I don't know when any of this stuff will get in stock. So I don't know. I haven't seen what they are. I, I haven't seen when they're going to be in stock. So I'm just kind of leaving that one alone for now. I may do an updated Ubiquiti camera video at some point. But for now, I'm still using... Uh, we've been selling more Synology systems and Ubiquiti systems and partly, you know, and these are a lot of small camera, like four camera setups, but the biggest reason why is the lack of availability of any of the Ubiquiti cameras. So it's been a challenge to get things in stock. Can you control VLANs through a MikroTik switch with PFSense? Um, yeah, you haven't had a MikroTik question pop up in a while. MikroTik follows standards for the most part for VLANs and networking. So yeah, you should be able to use it perfectly fine. Was it the TP link or the neck gear switches where you could VLAN hop or was it just a switch? Uh, it was the, someone told me they fixed it with a firmware, but yes, it was a TP link one where you could always get to the admin interface, even when you tag the port to a specific VLAN. There was no way to get it where you couldn't see the management interface. If you knew the IP of the management interface, you could simply stick, you statically assign an IP in the same subnet and you could always get to it, which I thought was interesting. Like They didn't filter this properly. 
What's the best cable organizer between switch and patch panel? I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Putting, putting patch panel. I, I don't have an easy answer, but it's probably Google the one that you like the best. Um, yeah, well, you can also VLAN hop if you don't configure it right. That's a different issue, but there was no way I could find on that old switch I had to configure it where you couldn't VLAN hop. So, hey, from the land down under. I like, you know, we have a, a bunch of Australian hot sauces and I actually like them a lot. We've, um, Nigel runs, uh, what is that? Uh, Tech Tribe and they're from Australia as well. And uh, they were nice enough to send us a box of hot sauces. So, uh, definitely a big fan of hot sauces from the land down under. <laughs> Australia seems like a neat place. That area of the world's kind of cool. It's fo very foreign to me. I've never traveled that far. So, uh, let's see. I prefer layer three for land stuff. Anything where you want to block traffic default is yeah. I mean, there's, there's exceptions of how you want to do everything. It comes down to how you architect networks, the size and scale of the network. It's not like too many people probably think they need it on a small network where they need a switch to handle some of the routing for offloading. And there's circumstances in your architecture where maybe that makes sense, but it's not always the case. It comes down to what is the architecture? What are you trying to design? And how do you have your design? This is where that comes in. All right. Good evening. Uh, it's only 430 for me. I'm going to wind this down pretty soon. I do have a few things to go do. Um, which because of that, did someone tag me in something? I heard my thing go off over here. Okay. Nothing, nothing pretty. So only 88 likes, 220 watching. Yeah. I'll shill for, um, let's, uh, go this here. I don't know what YouTube's doing with the like stuff, but here we go. People, here's all of you on here. Now we're going to get all crazy looking. Go ahead and uh, smash the like button. Oh, cool. Now we're going to get another one refreshing inside of here. It's going to be turtles all the way down. So I'm, I'll let you guys watch the like buttons go up in real time. <laughs> ah. Hey, it's we. I like them. The I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it's a, it's like a whole line of them from Australia, and I I like them all. They have one that's kind of like a sweet chili sauce too. Um, that I, it's great on French fries. I think everything's. I French fries are are really like my go to for what I'm going to dip in hot sauce. So that's. <laughs> Oh, is there only, I don't even know can, if people can see the likes and dislikes anymore. I don't know what the status of that is. It seems to be the status is always people argue about it online. Done. I'm like, okay, I, I just don't, people say, do you have an opinion on it? And uh, one of my superpowers is sometimes that I don't have opinions. Um, Cause I just, some things I'm like, huh? it's uh my day didn't change any. <laughs> is it gone? Is it back? Is it there? Did it go away again? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, flashbang is just too hot. Yes, we've had flashbang hot sauce. Yeah, the flashbang stuff. Did you ever get to try to flash? It's really hot. Uh, it, I'm fine with it being discontinued. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I've seen that YouTube made the like and go away, and then people were making it come back with some plugin. I, I'm like, whatever. I generally, um, I, I kind of get both arguments of the dislike campaigns. I don't know. I, I click the like button when I like something. I rarely click the dislike button. And I don't even like I said, I don't know if it's missing now or not, but it was a pretty rare occasion I clicked it. Mostly if I like something, I'm like, cool, thumbs up. I watch so much stuff on my Chromecast with my remote. I never thumbs up that. Sorry. So... 
Um, how will I celebrate tomorrow? That's pretty easy. I'm going to probably make some uh, videos or something. So that's probably how I'll celebrate. I like it'll be quiet here. My staff have the day off, so there's nobody else here. Oh, Linus, uh, Linus Tech Tips said, okay. Yeah, it's just, there's always controversy. <laughs> Stupid order wrong how-tos. Yeah. There's some bad how-to videos out there as well. Wow, the, the likes went up pretty far. We got we're up to 150 likes. Woohoo! Keep them coming. <laughs> There's, well, there's a bunch of you probably watching this on some streaming device. You're going, what like button? I don't know how to press the like button. Or other people that are listening to it, and it's like on the other side of the room, they're listening to me babble on about firewalls and going, eh, I have to walk across the room to click the like button. I ain't doing that. And I don't blame you. I wouldn't do it either. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a hypocrite at all. <laughs> I asked to smash the like button, but honestly, if it was across the room, I wouldn't hit it. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? I was at... I'm going to close all these windows and go back to what should I even I just leave this up on the screen while we wind it down. Final questions, few more minutes, final round or whatever. Um, is there any more questions for this before I wander off and go do something else? I always have fun. I like these Q and a videos. I, I, they seem to get, you know, I like answering topics like this. Um, oh, last pass, you know, I was going to put last pass in there because it's popular. I almost made some content on it and I'm like, why the credential stuffing and then the existential problem people seem to be running into of, can you even trust a password manager? Oh my. And I'm like, it was just credential stuffing. So I shared out the thing. I shared out that video and people are like, I don't know, man. I'm like, well then use a different password manager. And then there's the argument, well, maybe you shouldn't use password managers. I'm like, no, I think you're better off using password managers. Um, and then someone said it goes back into Bitwarden because that's my preferred password manager. We still like it. So, uh, yes. Uh, other than selling and installing 45 drives, we haven't really done anything video wise with 45 drives. Not really had time to, um, have you tried the latest TrueNAS RC? I have not. I got to get back over to it and see if the performance is there. So, yep, pressing like for your own reference. Just put it under the keyboard. That's, yeah. You're in luck, Raymond. I have a video on how to make Bitwarden hosted locally. Got that video done already. So um, there's not anything that I'm aware of different about the way you install it today versus the way you install it when I did the video. So, uh, can you recommend a benchmark tool for Windows SQL other than HammerDB? I don't benchmark SQL. Um, so, no, I don't have any recommendations. I do very little. I don't really do any Windows SQL stuff. Yes, people really should use 2FA. Yep. Nope, no, no ubiquity cameras in stock. I've debated, like, should I sell the ones on my building? Like, I could get good money for them right now. They're worth a lot more than what I paid for them, which is weird. <laughs> uh, I just did that video. The PFSense video I did the other day should cover how to how to set up home subnets. I mean, it's at least enough information on there I, to do it. If you know how to set up a subnet, because I didn't talk about how to set up a subnet, um, if you watch like a getting started, so you know how to build subnets and firewall rules and PF sense. If you watch the video that I posted yesterday, you'll actually find I link to all the relevant videos to cover and spider off into all the aspects. The playlist that is underneath that video in that description is enough to really um, get you going on all of it. When you set up open VBM connections on PF sense for some endpoints, do you allow local traffic? Uh, is that just a matter? Yeah, I have a video on even how to do radius 
So you can get really specific with radius, IP assignments, and rules for users coming in on OpenVPN. Um, I don't know. Those though, I think Ubiquity will sell. Um, will sell them until people don't buy them anymore. So that. 2FA on PFSense, uh, OpenVPN. Technically, it's going to be 3FA if you have one. There's ways to do it, um, but you already have user pass certificate, and you can set up per user certificate. So those certificates are part of your factors of authentication. So technically, it's 2FA. But you might be asking, technically, what would be 3FA, which would be like a rolling number, um, an ephemeral number that changes like TOTP. There's not an integration yet in PF sense for doing um, that. There is in Untangle, but not in PF sense. Ooh, bacon and onions pizza. Yes. I'm working on a new video soon for the latest version of Synology surveillance station. Thanks for all you do for your community. Learned a lot from your content. Keep up videos. Thank you very much for your donation. It is greatly appreciated. Oh, yes. They are pushing hard for their hardware. They're pushing hard for the dream machines. They're trying to sell those turds. It just, I say turd. I mean that with the best intentions because if you're a home user with very limited or very basic needs, not limited, uh, very basic needs, it's probably a great device. But for the price, you can buy something else that has more features. Pineapple pizzas, yes. Uh, maybe other win benchmarking for network storage, not SQL, but overall workloads. I do most of my benching in Linux. If you look at my videos, the majority of them are done there. I, so I don't, there's only, I can't remember the name of it. There's very, there's um, there's that one benchmarking utility and it eludes me, but everyone uses it uh, for Windows benchmarking that has a drive utility. I think I've used it before. It's, its name eludes me right now. Someone will probably throw it down here in the comments. Um, when I'll just Google it real quick. Windows benchmark test. Passmark. So uh, Passmark. I'll throw a link in here. There you go. Use Passmark for benchmarking. It's popular. Let's see. Not really. I don't care much for the, like 2.5 gig is eh, whatever. I, I Why not go 10? If you're going to go 2.5, not, why not go 10? So um, I, I don't have any specific reviews for 2.5 on the roadmap. Uh, Cinebench is the other one too. I think that's more for video, but Passmark is one of them. Yeah, a lot of this. Linux, I got covered. Uh, the Windows portion. I'm not a Windows person. I employ a bunch of people that are. That's if you're wondering how you run a business that manages, you know, lots of businesses and all their Windows stuff. I have a high level understanding of Linux or of Windows, like of what's going on. But some of the details and the nuances, I don't deal with day in and day out. So. Is there a way to unzip? Yeah, you can load the zip tools from the command line in Linux. That's a Google search. <laughs> 2.5 is next big. I, yeah, I know 10 gig is definitely uses more power, but are we at a power deficit here? That's, that's my question. Are we, are we, um, that couple extra, that extra watt it takes to make 10 G work? Is that where that's the big problem i've had 10g in my computer for a few years it's never i never think about oh no do i have enough power to run my 10g card that i bought like three or four four years ago now it's the same one works perfectly fine it's the a i have the asus 10 gig rj45 you know interface card it's been working fine for quite a few years 
So that's why I don't think much about it. I watch you from some time. I forgot you mainly do Linux. Ah, that's okay. Lots of fun. Linux is my, I don't know. I'm more way more comfortable in Linux. Don't use that many web application firewalls. So a little outside of uh, my knowledge space. So not something I have a lot of experience with. All right. I will give it three more minutes. Then I'll just quit at 450. Because that's almost two hours of me babbling about stuff and answering questions. Don't worry. I'll be back next week to do this again. I'm not complaining. I will eventually run out of voice. I have to go visit um, my daughter and my son to go hang out with them. Well, I got to figure out where they're at. So if they're messaging me or whatever they're doing. Let's see. Uh, lots of people tagging me in things. Where are my children? They message me. So I'll figure out where I'm going next. Would you wife going to be happy with the home studio so she can <laughs> see you less? Uh, she's just going to find me in the basement. That's uh, I'm just going to live there. That's that's what I'm thinking. All right. I know where my kids are now. All right, found them, so I know where to go, know where to drive to next. <laughs> wife can be happy. Let's see. My wife's uh, working from home as well, so we'll actually, she'll be working in the upstairs office, and I'll be working in a basement. So we already have an office upstairs, but it's not suited to be a studio. I was going to remodel the upstairs office to be my studio, um, but I wanted a bigger area for, I don't know, whatever reason. And I didn't want to have to share an office with my wife. <laughs> So that's why the Pittsburgh toilet wife says it's not happening. I'm saying, let's just say if I plumb the toilet, but didn't build the room around it, it may be a thing. I like, Hey, trash and you have them uh, in your rack behind you in your basement. Um, yeah, there is a dream machine back here. And uh, we, we, if you notice, it's not on, we, we plug it in. We want to be disappointed. We, we actually refer to it here and I'm going to put a sticker on it to reflect this. It's called the unified disappointment machine. And we turn it on because we want to be disappointed with whatever new feature it, it still doesn't have. So yes, we do have a unified disappointment machine behind me. So <laughs> uh, as soon as the new studio is finished, I will, rip all of this down. There's lots of things around me and computers and everything and pack it all up and move there. So I think it's going to take me probably near uh, 30 to 60 days to get out of here because I'm waiting on contractors to finish the ceiling because that takes time. More time than I'd like. They, they, uh, when you order specific things, it takes longer to get them. It turns out. So, Ah, yes. I'll connect my Unify Disappointment Machine to my Unify Aggravation Switch and uh, get my network put together. <laughs> hey, I'm not joking. Any of my staff, if you ask them, you know, why do you plug in the Unified Dream Machine? They go, to be disappointed. <laughs> that's really, that's, you know, we do consulting and sometimes people want us to consult on something related to it. So we're like, does it even do that? We'll plug it in. We're like, yeah, it still doesn't do the thing that they hope it did. So our answer becomes, sorry, it doesn't do the thing you hope it did. So, uh, uh, the 1100, 500, 500 and fiber. Sure. I would say probably, um, it's going to be on the edge of whether or not it can handle 500, 500 fiber, but just straight up routing, it could probably route that. You're not going to run Sierracata on it, but you can be able to route it. All right. I think we finally reached the end here. Awesome. I'm glad all of you there. Oh, why are you, uh, why are you moving to the new studio? Because the old studio is part of my office and we need more office. And the way we get more office and everything is to take my studio and I want to move it to my house. And then the office will be expanded with more people. 
What are you going to turn your current studio into? Office space and uh, project space for projects we have going on here. So, uh, next home lab show video will be Wednesday. Next Wednesday. UAPs and everything else, not from them. Um, yes, disappointment machine behind PF Sense. I thought about putting, uh, I may do a video on this because I, I get it. People bought one and are not sure what to do with it or they want to use it as their controller, but then get a PF Sense. And I may do a video on how to put a PF Sense in front of it. I, it's something that people seem confused by. And literally, it's like I said, you put it in front of it. I'll talk about the pros and cons of having it double natted. But yeah, that's. Um, it's, if you already have it and you're using it, let's say for a doorbell or a protect camera, like in, if it's two cameras and you don't want to buy something else, there's a way to configure it and make it work for those things. So do you have a roadmap for the migration to the new studio? Yeah. As soon as the contractors are done, it's all about the contractors. That's, it's not up to me as much as I'm at their mercy of, uh, when they get things done. So that's, that's the real challenge for that. All right. I said it a few times. Now I'm actually going to make it happen. There's a button over here that says end broadcast. I always hate pressing this button. I don't like hitting it. I don't like saying goodbye, but I will because I have to move on. Um, hit me up in the forums. Hit me up on Twitter. Reach out. Say hi. Oh, oh, you know what? Before I leave, let's let's share this with you. Please follow me on Twitter for this uh, stream of stupid that I did. Hold on where they go. We'll leave you with a tweet. Um, well, a series of them because I felt like doing this yes, for a little while. I started a little thread here uh, that says, what are some of your favorite tech jokes? Some of mine are favorite. Uh, some of my favorites are about UDB because I don't care if you get them or not. And the worst ones are about broadcast storms because everyone's already heard them so many times. Also, be careful sharing RFC 1918 jokes because they should only be told in private. Jay came in here with uh, a sequel. Curry walks in a bar, sees two tables, walks up to them and says, may I join you? Uh, CRC jokes tend to get repeated often until you get them right. But serial jokes are done one done bit by bit. Uh, oh, I do like this one. Uh, like on that. What kind of networking do they use in the Shire? Token ring. Hey, who's going to tell us a good domain name joke? Ah. Uh, this is, uh, I'm going to keep this up as many as I can do it because it's all about the NTP jokes. NTP jokes are good as long as they're well-timed. But if anyone tells you a token ring joke, remember that you need to wait your turn to laugh. I'll throw this out there for any of you that are also following me around on Twitter. Um, so away we go. <laughs> if you feel like contributing or following me on Twitter, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Feel free to contribute and uh, enjoy my silliness. So go ahead and, uh, all right, I'm seeing anything else. Yes. So hopefully you enjoyed my dad, uh, dad jokes and follow me on Twitter. Connect with me on LinkedIn or wherever you may find me. I'm all over the socials. I don't mind when people connect to me. I do not do tech support for DMs. If you want to DM and say hi, I do respond. But if you go, Tom, how do I do this? I may just respond with a forum link uh, because I don't do tech support over DMs. Hopefully that makes it clear. So <laughs> nice. I like the token ring one. Thank you very much. So <laughs> all right, now I can hit end broadcast. I gave everyone something to go read and laugh about as well. So all right, take care. See you next year. Literally, see you next year. Ah, oh, you only get to say that once a year, really. <laughs>